happens if I click on, click on the chat? Oh, it comes to this slide. Hello. Hi. What's your name? Oh, me? You. Yes. Oh, hi, Joe. <laughs> I'm hi. I'm Danny. I oh, sent awesome. you the wine. Did you oh, get that? Of course. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I Did haven't had like it, it yet. Oh, I see. Maybe it's too sweet for your taste. No, I haven't. I, I, I need a special occasion. When would you like me to drink it? I don't know. Your father's birthday? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good one. I'll do it. I think that's a good occasion. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Here with Thank my kid. But you guys always give me such oh. nice gifts. It's, it's, it's too oh. kind. My pleasure. Hey, I was wondering um, if it would be okay if uh, me and my family are traveling to New York uh this march would it be yeah. okay if i sent a bottle of carmenere Chilean carmenere to your family address i know it's your parents uh dance studio but yeah. i don't want to be rude i, I don't want to be <laughs> intrusive would no you okay can with of course of course yeah? yes you can say it. yeah I mean, you don't have to you don't have to give me nobody has to give me anything honestly you i know are, i know like, but um uh, You've given Your me the best gonna... gift by, by, by helping this, this cause, and, and that's really what Well, I, I actually am a potential donor at DKMS and for um, children with blood cancer. Amazing. And uh, I also donate blood regularly. Good for and you. And I, I donate to different causes every time my pocket can afford it. <laughs> so it's we nice. And um, gosh, I was going to ask something else, but I, it kind of <laughs> slipped my mind. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, my kid was here, but he's, he's too shy. He's five oh, years yeah. old. Yeah, he wanted to invite you. Five years old, getting started in acting. That's when I started. Get him going. <laughs> Make that kid work he's for a living. He's too shy. He wanted to invite you to his favorite ramen restaurant here in, in Philly, but I told him, it doesn't work like that. He he lives too far away. <laughs> yeah, maybe someday. Yeah, but that was it. Oh, and I just wanted to comment how much I really love Shadowlands. And Good. I guess uh, being directed by Sir Richard Attenborough must have been such an experience. And uh, one, one small question. How did they play the, the teething thing? Because I noticed you were teething back then. You were changing your teeth to your grown-up teeth in Jurassic Park. And then in Shadowlands, you had another one fall off. And they played it. And it, it was it was such a small detail, but it was so beautiful to see the, the detail, the, the director, the writers, it went kind, kind of just put it together. It was so sweet seeing you grow on screen, literally. Yeah, they have to, they give you um uh <laughs> Hi. Hey, pal. How, are you? <laughs> How you doing? You taking me to a restaurant? Si lo vas a invitar al restaurant. Sí. Yes. Can I say yes? Yes. <laughs> he doesn't speak English yet. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to learn some Spanish. In, in well, you're always time. welcome here in, in Chile. Great. Um. Yeah. They. They. Are, there's a thing that's called a flipper that a lot of child actors wear when their teeth are coming in, they're losing teeth, getting teeth. Yeah. And it's just basically like, it's kind of like dentures essentially, where uh -huh. you just like stick something to the roof of your mouth and they like align your teeth. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, you take it off and you have your crazy like crooked teeth coming in like normal. Um, and so that was kind of a little movie magic there for Jurassic Park and Shadowlands. Um, I see. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Richard Attenborough, what a dream. It was amazing to be able to work with him as an actor and then as a director. Um, just an incredible experience, the nicest human being you'll ever meet in your life and the uh, absolute, you know, master of his craft. I, I love that man. I love that movie. The pain now is part of the happiness then. Beautiful, beautiful lines in that. Gorgeous. Oh yeah, the, the final scene, one of the final scenes in, in the attic with Sir Anthony My favorite scene I've ever done. Mom. To this day, it's, it's my favorite scene I've ever done. It's beautiful. It's heart wrenching, but it's beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, you so much. That would happen. Mm. 
Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate everything. Thank you so Take much. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Hi, how are you? What's your name? I'm good. My name is Gabby and I am a fellow New Yorker. Oh, awesome. There we go. Empire State. But, uh, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. That's where my sister lives. Oh, okay. Very nice. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess my question is, I'm a big World War II, I guess, I don't want to say enthusiast, but uh, yes. <laughs> and you kind of, it's weird to phrase it that way, but you kind of touched on it a little bit that you've met Sledge's family. How did you prepare for that? Well, I felt like it was an honor, you Just, know. Where uh, did you kind of... Yeah. Um, you, know, you know what it was? I, they, they got me in touch with the Sledge family before I shot. So I used it as a experience to learn more about him, to learn about his family, and to maybe just gain some insight as to who he was um, and really like, you know, really like kind of like a little bit studying his sons and just like mm -hmm. finding pledge in them. Um, so I used it as a kind of, um, I, I, that kept me kind of not nervous because I felt like I had a job to do, you know, like, so right, it wasn't, right. but it was like, it was terrifying, right? Like I, they are entrusting me with like their father's yeah. reputation and what, what many people will remember from about him. Um, other than of course, it's an incredible book with the old breed. Um, but so it was, it was scary, but they were so warm and welcoming as was his, his wife, um, that I just ended up loving them and just wanted to, oh, that job was amazing because, and it was, it was, it was difficult for like every reason I can think of. Like it was difficult physically. It was difficult mentally. Uh, the shoot was really hard. The um, kind of responsibility I felt to the family was like something I'd never felt before. Um, the responsibility to my own grandfather who served in the Pacific. Just all those things kind of on your back, but you need, you know, it's nice also to have that because whenever like it just got too difficult, like, it's too rainy or the flies were trying to burrow into my eyes and nose or like I was sweating because it's Australian it's 120 degrees down there and whatever like the mud was too high like whatever it was like I just was like stay focused stay focused you have a job right. to do and you have a responsibility more importantly so uh yeah I was able to uh use those experiences and, and like I said channel them into uh in, into the job I had to do but it was a it's privilege a of my life. To that role. I'm sorry. I, I enjoy it to this day. It's one of my favorite roles you've ever, ever done. And it's very raw. And I think that that's one of the reasons I think that it's just so realistic and people really believe that this guy is sledge. I hope so. I gave it, I gave everything I had and it's uh, yeah, it's, a, it's an incredibly special project. I never cite it as like my favorite one because mm -hmm. it was so challenging and it was just so mentally and you know, just draining, but it was easily, you know, the most important. Thank you. You're welcome. How do we feel? How do we feel about the Yankees this year? Completely off topic. <laughs> I don't know. I've given up all <laughs> on them. I don't, I don't know how that oh, lineup was so bad last year. Ridiculous. I know. <laughs> and like Garrett Cole, they couldn't have figured out the spider thing, uh, you know, back in Houston. It had to be, of course, when we became a Yankee that suddenly uh, we find out the magic was in the fingers there. Sorry, uh, no one cares about what we're talking about right now. But, uh, <laughs> I'm trying we'll to stay see. optimistic, so we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I'll support them anyway. 1996. We'll see. It's the yeah. 96. Oh, pinstripes till I die. All right, I gotta go. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Joe. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, who's next? Hello. Hi. Oh my God. Hi. <laughs> like uh, okay, your shirt, so, um, Jurassic Park. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. So I work as an staff accountant on Jurassic Park. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. So I was going <laughs> to ask a Jurassic Park question, but now that I know, I'm sorry, everyone asked that question. I'm sorry. I cannot believe I'm speaking. Yeah, Jurassic Park, go ahead. Also, I'm from Mexico. Hi, uh, hola. Oh. Uh, do you want to tell us about what about GI Joe retaliation or like 
your words someone said i'm sorry i don't even know what to say um gi joe retaliation john chu was the director we went to school together so we knew each other from usc film school he was a couple years ahead of me and he ran into my manager at some party and they were talking he was like oh my goodness joe would be great for this part of the movie Called me up, wanted me to do it. I got to, I got to be in that. My role, unfortunately, was like cut down a little bit in that, which was very sad because it was actually Channing Tatum was supposed to, uh, spoiler, die trying to <laughs> save. Me. So he came and tried to rescue me, and then we both died together. Um, but then, because Channing became such a big star, test audiences were like wait, we don't want him to die like failing at the last thing he ever does. Like he tries to save this guy and they both die. That's depressing. So they changed it and they made it another character who lives and he goes and saves him instead. So that was a bit of a downer, um, but the experience was still really fun. I'm not in that movie that much, but I got to work on it for a couple of months and the whole cast was really awesome. Um, yeah. I just picked that because uh, I know everyone wants to ask questions about Jurassic Park which my friends custom made this for me because I always, this is my all time favorite movie. Hey, it's a uh, good one. No, it is. Sorry, I was gonna ask a question about Tim, but I thought go that ahead, would be boring, yeah, but no, I know. I, no, truly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, I really appreciate you guys. Thank, thank, thank you for giving and uh, for being a part of this. It's been great. Thank you. Hello. Hi, yo. This is Hi. Gracie. I'm from Chile, too. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. I, I uh, said that's a place I really actually, want to go. Actually, I, really I, to uh, I invite you to a uh, solar eclipse in 20, 2019. Oh, and yeah. you say, I'll be there. So I'm still <laughs> waiting for you. <laughs> I'm okay. still in the airport with your name like this. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'll let you know when I can finally make it down. But one day, uh, that's, that's on my yeah, list. Yeah, yeah, you can come whenever you want. Uh, my question is, uh, how important is Queen music to you on this moment? Uh, are you still um, listening? Or it was just for the movie thing? Oh, I mean, it's it'll always be special to me. Um, oh. It became more special when I started doing it, the movie, of course. And I think I've said this in interviews where like learning how to play the songs, you gain a new appreciation, like hearing the bass lines now, like more prominently, like you hear all the intricacies of what John's doing and how everything plays together. So it's still special to me. Um, you know, some songs probably more than others, you know, when I hear songs that you don't hear as often, I get more excited about that. Um, but I'm never, I'm never sad when a Queen song comes on because it always reminds me of, you know, one of the best experiences of my life, um, you know, life changing. Um, so it's still extremely special to me. I still love the music. I always will. Right. Who, who can't, how do you not love that music? It's just like, yeah. and I see on like Instagram, you know, like on all like the discover pages, I'm always, they always like show me things about like, you know, old footage of Queen at different concerts or at different uh, music videos that they did that I'd never seen before. And so it's cool to still be able to like discover uh, discover that. What's your stuff. favorite song? My favorite song? Yeah. Oh, somebody your to love. Your favorite song. Oh. Somebody to love. It has to be. Um, but uh, you know, I, I I could I could pick a different song every day. They're they're so amazing. Yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, it is. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for waiting. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Listen, I'm in love with my car is a really good song. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I had lived no. all that stuff about I'm in love with my car in the movie with the. Uh, it's just a bit weird, Roger. What exactly are you doing uh, with that <laughs> car? I made that up. <laughs> Hey, 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 hey. We got I had another one where I was like, are you taking the car on dates? 
<laughs> and then at the party, I, I there's an ad lib that you didn't hear. They used the one that Gwil did, but right before that, I said something else about the car where I was just like, are you in love with your new car as well? Like, which car is better? We kept trying to throw those jokes and we thought they were so funny. Hello. Hi. I was just- Hello, Joey. Thank- <laughs> so glad to see you. and Thank you for your time. Of course. Um, my name is Diane. I'm from Russia. Um, and- my question is about Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> so, yes. um, were there any scenes ah. with you during the filming of Bohemian Rhapsody that were not included in the final uh, version, uh, but you like it? Uh, maybe it was fun or dramatic. So maybe you so tell us about scene, it. A scene we shot that was cut out. Yes. We're talking about. Yeah, um, yes. probably the favorite one. Uh, originally in the script, uh, Queen went to Japan. And so we did a we did a concert in Japan where we did the song 39. And when it happened, the crowd rushes the stage. So like a bunch of girls come up and try to like hug us and like kiss us. And like, and we're just like swarmed by these girls and we're trying to still play. Um, that was hilarious that day we had so much fun doing that yeah. why it was cut out who knows they had to rearrange things to make it work um but it was really really fun and it's a scene that i think people actually would have really liked if it had made made the cut and of course i'm gonna say john deacon's intro duh i needed that i wish they never took that out which is a shame there's another little moment that was in the cut until the very end and then they took it out i was so sad when freddie leaves um uh jim beach's office um and when when he's like trying to get the band back together and he walks outside and then and then you know we bring him back in i did this ad lib it was one of the first days on set where freddie left his glasses behind so i as a goof just like picked up the glasses and said i always wanted to try these and i put on freddie mercury's glasses and i go like this i'm just like what do you think mr bad guy how do i look and the other guys are like, oh, yeah, that looks good. Yeah, don't forget that. And like, so it was this fun little moment where like, we're pretending we're all serious with Freddie. And we're like, can you give us a moment we have to think about if we want to be back with you? And instead, we're not talking about anything. We're just goofing around. Um, <laughs> that was in the cut until the very last moment that those five minutes I was talking about. And then they were they were they cut the movie down just a little bit more. I think if they knew what a huge hit the movie was going to be, they would have kept those five minutes in. They were worried it was going to be like a little bit too long or whatever. But I don't think if you're in it for two hours and 12 minutes, you're going to be in it for two hours and 17. So I don't know. But uh, that was that was one thing I really missed. That was a fun day. And and the director loved it. And, you know, but that's how, that's showbiz, right? Things happen. I hope that someday we can see this. <laughs> Thank you so much. For you're welcome. Your time you're welcome. And- uh, I want to say that all of Russian uh, fans waiting uh, for you here, uh, we all love you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have Thank a good you. day. One day I'll get there. Thanks so much. I hope so. I hear typing. Hi, um, this is Natasha. Is it um, my turn or? I uh, hear you. I do not see you. I don't know. My mm-hmm. video is working. Mm-hmm. There it is. Hello. I see you now, I think. Hi. Hi. Yes. Natasha, Hi. yeah, I got skipped a bit because, yeah, I don't know what happened. It wouldn't work. Technical issues. Well, well we got you back. Thank God, because <laughs> like I was like, <laughs> really worried. But yeah, um, yeah, I'm actually from I'm in the Philippines here, so oh, we have another, yeah, another fan from Philippines, and it's three thirty a.m. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's like really worth it. We had no time that was going to work for everybody. I didn't know what to do. We did our best. <laughs> I apologize. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, really, really getting to talk to you and hearing from you, it's really worth it. Um, I'm glad um, to hear it. Uh, yeah, so actually I have two questions. One, because it was like kind of personal, 
and so they wanted to get a lighthearted question afterwards. So okay. um, yeah, but so the first one is actually about your dad, if it's all right with you. Yeah. Um, so I sure. just wanted to know, like, you know, about the saying that of a person, like, the, even if they're gone, that their memory lives on through people and in the stories they tell about about them. So I wanted to know um, if you had like the funniest, like the funniest kind of um, story you have um, about your dad or like involving him. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Yeah. It'll take a. It, this could be a little long to tell, but I'm going to try to do it as fast as I can. Uh, it's because some people love the story. The cast of Bohemian loves the story. So uh, my dad really got interested in getting his Italian citizenship. Uh, because that's where you know our family was from. So he uh, basically did this thing where he came out to LA, Los Angeles to get a citizenship. It was easier to get it out there than in New York for whatever reason. So I was living in LA um, and he gets a citizenship. He comes back home. He's like, hey, Joe, I just got the citizenship. Like, you want to come down and get yours too? I was like, just like that? He's like, yeah, you just have to come down and you fill out these papers, say you're my son, you've got it. Sure, why not? I go down with him to get it. We go to the Italian consulate and the woman behind the desk who's like helping us get the citizenship is obviously an Italian uh, from Italy and she speaks English, but with an Italian accent, heavy Italian accent. And she starts like giving my dad these directions and my dad out of nowhere starts talking back to her in an Italian accent. <laughs> so he's like, okay. I take the pen and I write his name and he take, go here and go and give to you. And I'm just like watching mortified at my dad. So embarrassing talking back to this woman, the way she's talking to him. She walks away. I'm like, dad, what are you doing? He's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you're talking the way she's talking. Like you're from Italy. I wasn't doing that. I was like, that's exactly what you were doing. It's insane. It's insulting. Please stop. He's like, I'm not doing that at all. She comes back. He's like, okay, we have the forma and I give to you. And then he becomes citizen Italia. Huh? I'm just like, please get me out of here. So we finally <laughs> left and like literally always, but especially on the ride home, we're like heading, we're heading back to my house in LA and he's like, okay, so where do I go here? I'm like, okay, you take huh? <laughs> the left huh? and you go up oh, the hill. He's like, Joe, stop it, Joe. Uh, so that was an amazing thing that I always brought up and every, every chance I possibly could. <laughs> yeah, that's actually it's really funny. Oh my God. Your dad, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Your dad just like amazing. <laughs> yeah, he'd probably be embarrassed if he knew I was telling that story to everybody, but. <laughs> It's worth it. Yes. Um, okay, so um, that was that turned out a lot more <laughs> lighthearted than <laughs> I expected. Uh -huh. Yeah, actually, but oh well, at least I'll I can still ask the second one. We have more laughs. Go ahead. Um, so you actually stated in a said in an interview with Will and Rami that you three would you tended to prank Ben a lot the most because he's yeah. like the baby of the group. Yeah. Yeah. So you wanted to know like your favorite prank or, the, or like the funniest one that you played on Ben, the poor Ben. Oh, it was, yeah. I mean, Rami was the king at practical jokes like that. Um, he like, he basically was able to convince, like there was a part of, um, I can't remember what song it was. Maybe it was Keep Yourself Alive or something. There's a song that has like this incredibly difficult drum solo in the middle of it. And forgive me, super queen fans, if I'm saying the wrong song, but um, he he was like, Ben was like really paranoid because like he didn't want to have to do that. He's like, that's way too hard. That's like, I that's impossible. Like, and it was, and we're always like, no, we're just doing the first 50 seconds of the song. We're not even going to get anywhere near that. He's like, okay, are you sure? And he just like kept harping on it. So Rami sees this and he's like, oh, well, this is golden opportunity. And he told the ADs like, you have to go tell Ben, assistant directors, that's what that means. You have to go tell Ben that, you know, Roger's coming and he said that he just really wants to hear the solo. <laughs> um, so you have to do it. 
And watching Ben's face, I've never seen anyone angrier about anything. He's like, I told you this. I didn't have any time. As well. He's like, storm, storms off. He's like, I got to go practice. Where's my drum teacher? I got to get this. We're just like dying, laughing, just like crying, trying to keep it together. And we were just like, of course, we just kept going with it. We're like, Ben, they told us, we know, we, we practiced the whole song. We knew this for a month that like, we were going to have to be playing this. And he's just like, I said specifically that I wasn't going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> two for one <laughs> and they both cover their mouths <laughs> are you guys sisters what are you doing i can't hear you are you on mute hi hi oh my god <laughs> wow um that's sydney she's my friend i'm cameron hi cameron oh my god <laughs> So um, my question for you was, like, did it feel... Who's the dog? Oh, that's Dash. Dash, Dash. Yeah. Does Dash have a question? Dash, do you have a question for Joe? <laughs> oh, no. um, I, I guess not. Um, he's not very vocal today. Um, but basically, my question was, uh, like, on the set of Bo Rap, did you feel comfort or like pressure with having like Brian and Roger there or was it like so was it like pressuring or was it comforting like how did it feel um it was pressure that turned to comfort when we were doing rehearsals before we shot anything we had been working on some of the songs and working on like live aid and making it you know as perfect as possible and we just found out that Roger and Brian were there at the office and they wanted to come see the rehearsal. And we were like, we are not ready for it. We do not <laughs> want to do that. We we're like, lie to them. Tell them we're not here. Tell them we're somewhere else. Tell them we're going on a location. We're doing something else. And they were just like, we already told them that you were here. And so that first time having to perform for them was like terrifying. But there we go. Like we had like uh, Brian May like filming it on his phone and with the biggest smile on his face in the world. And so when we got to really know them and realize how supportive they were, and they cared deeply, like we wanted that though. We wanted to be as accurate as possible. Brian wanted to make sure that that Gwil's wig was perfect. He got that hairstyle right. Um, and, uh, you know, watching like Roger kind of teach some, teach Ben some, some, some stuff on the drums. Like they just were so supportive and we knew their heart was in it that it wasn't just like, eh, we just want the paycheck and whatever happens, happens. But we also, they also gave us all the support that we needed, that it wasn't like, if you guys get this wrong, we're gonna kill you. You know, they were, they were, they, they could not have been more perfect. Um, they really only came to set typically when we were doing some concert stuff. Um, but I mean, we always got tips, you know, like like Brian even gave me tip, tips about, about Deaky and stuff like that. So it was, uh, it was it was really wonderful. I wish that I wish that John had come around to come to set, but I got to meet a couple of his boys. So uh, that's I'll I'll take what I could get there. But I hope I did him proud too. Yeah. Um. I just have a quick second question. Um. I'm in high school, and yeah. I'm going to be like we have a school play type thing, and I'm in a directing class. So I'm oh. going to be helping direct it. And I was wondering, yeah. and it's my first time ever doing anything like that. I was wondering if you had any tips on it. <laughs> uh, yell at them. No, uh, <laughs> no uh, you know, I don't know. It's it's hard to give tips if I don't know specifically what it's about. But just like if it, know know where you have to focus your attention, because um, like even doing undrafted, right? There was like twelve people at a time that I had to direct sometimes, and if I felt like somebody was struggling with something I would make sure to like try to nurture that um also like no different actors have different tendencies and they have different ways of their everyone's process is different and there's no wrong way um mm -hmm. some people need like 
a lot of direction and like feel like you're really like massaging the performance. Some people just like are yakking and joking and then turn it on when the camera comes on. You know, some people are very prepared. Some people are not so prepared. Um, so just like make sure that you understand what each actor needs, you know, like, do they need someone that's a little sterner? Do they need someone that hangs back a little bit? Try to make the set as, as comfortable for everybody as possible. You want everyone there having a good time because the better time they're having, the more apt they're going to be to listen to you and to like take you seriously um, because you need to, of course, like have their respect if you're going to be able to have their ear. Um, have a plan, be nimble. I will. So, Thank you. Of course. Great to meet you Great and your friend you. who disappeared. Um, <laughs> But uh, thanks for participating. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hello. Hi. Hi. So I um, I think you kind of answered it earlier, but um, we were hoping that maybe Tim and Lex were going to make an appearance in Jurassic World and probably... Sounds like we either can't answer that or maybe that's not happening. Oh, it's not <laughs> happening, unfortunately. I, I really wish it was. You know, obviously I'm seeing, you know, all, all the all the stuff about the cat. The cast is coming back. And it's like, well. I know. It's disappointing. <laughs> I'm like, well, if you're going to have the OGs, like, you need Tim and Lex. But I know you've got like, it's so funny. Like, because right now, like, it's everything from like the 80s and 90s. These characters are coming back. The actors are coming back for like you know, yeah. so many different TV shows and movies. And it's just like, dang, why can't we get these Jurassic kids back in here? <laughs> um, I just think it would be so much fun to yeah. like kind of see, like see where their lives went. And and again, I think that there's such a natural way to incorporate them in the story. I hope it happens one day. You know, that's all I can say. I, I, I would love it. I it's just such too. a beautiful, wonderful experience. And uh, um, I've met with Colin a couple of times. He's a really great guy. So I'm hoping that, uh, you know, they'll find a place for us one day. Yeah, and I just got to tell you, um, I'm in Iowa, and, and um, there's actually around here, there's a guy that owns a Ford Explorer and a Jeep that are both dressed up as Jurassic Park vehicles, Jurassic. so <laughs> I think of you every time I see them, so. Oh, do you? <laughs> so, That's awesome. Uh, I was thinking the music uh, man. And I really think that you, <laughs> I really think that you and Gwil and Ben need to put something else together. You guys had such great chemistry in Bohemian Rhapsody and it would just be great to see you guys again in something. I don't even care why. I, I agree. I'm trying to write something that I can put just like everyone from the Bo Rap cast in. Uh, it's just hard to find so many characters, but I'm working on it. We, we, all, we all had a little vacation together a year ago yeah. before I started writing it and I got to figure out how to finish it. But uh, we talk about it all the time. We, 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 we need to work together again, whether it be a a sequel to Bo Rap, or it'd be something else like it'll happen someday. You yeah. you will see us on screen Perfect. together again. It happened for me and Rami awesome. already. So uh, yeah, it. right. Well, it was so wonderful meeting you. Thank you. Great to meet you. Thanks a lot. Hello. Oh wow! I I didn't think I was going to be able to ask a question. How are you? <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm, wow, um, I'm Sophie, and um, I'm Hi, from the States, but I live in Austria. This is Kaylee, my daughter, Hi, and I just, I just wanted to just tell you, I just, uh, um, I said one day if I ever got to speak to you, I wanted to tell you that I've been like watching your film since I was like really like a kid, so like since like the mid '90s, and awesome. um, and before there was Google and before there was like any like real internet, I didn't have it at home, but my uncle had the internet and he had Alta Vista and you were like my very first um internet search ever like you know <laughs> stuff about you on like a piece of paper so I just wanted to let you know that for some reason that was like a goal of mine to tell you that one day um so that's great to hear that's such a cool piece of trivia for myself that I was once someone's first internet search yeah I, I wasn't sure if that was like a thing you've heard before but I, I figured no uh -huh. <laughs> what 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 did you type in just my name or something else I just typed in your name and then um, it, I came up with like this website. It had like a yellow background. So um, it was, I, I think it was just joemazella.com. <laughs> oh, maybe. It might have been my fan club. Mike Edwards was the. Yeah. Yeah. It was, like, the, yeah. it was like, like I said, like maybe like 97 or something like that. That's so, so I just, funny. We grew up together. So, 
<laughs> so sorry for that little side note. But um, what I wanted to ask, um, I have a million questions, but I'll just ask one. Um, can you just describe maybe like one very memorable fan experience you've had? I don't know if you've asked it already, but I had to miss part of this. But if you have like one just like really out there fan experience. Out there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've had a couple of those. Um, <laughs> most fans are amazing. Most fans are great, wonderful. Um, when I was a kid, there was some interesting things that oh, I don't. If if I don't want to embarrass those people, so I'm not going to tell that story. I'm sorry, but I will tell you this: there was a time when I was in LA. My I had a house in LA, and um, I was just at home because that's where you are sometimes. And I got a knock on the door and I saw these like, and stupidly in my house in LA, I had like windows over my doorway. So you could just look into my house, right? You can just look into my house. So I can't hide. I can't pretend I'm not there. If I'm sitting on the couch in my living room and I look like you can see me. So <laughs> like these guys are like peering in, like going like this and just like, oh no. Um, so I like go and open my door because I want to get murdered. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> and I open it and it's these three guys who are kind of big guys, you know, they're in their thirties. And, and the first guy just goes like, please don't call the police. Please, please don't get us arrested. We're sorry. And I'm just like, that's not a good start. Uh, <laughs> Uh, okay. And he's like, we're just fans. We're just fans of yours. And, and our, and our buddy, our fourth fan is over there hiding in the bushes because he's afraid. Um, but like, we just like wanted to wondering if you could like sign some things for us. And I'm just like, uh, oh, okay. Okay. I will do that so that you don't enter my house and not let me call 911. Um, but so they just like, they, they were actually like very nice. I have to say they're very sweet. They were harmless, but you know, they did like an internet search and found out where I lived in LA and then showed up there unannounced. That's like not great. Um, so I signed their stuff and I was like, oh man, um, oh, you guys are lucky you caught me. Like I'm, I'm usually not here. I usually spend most of my time back East. And then they said back to me my address back east <laughs> and they were like yeah like we thought about going there but we're gonna try this first and i'm just like oh. yeah okay. and the photos for them i said goodbye they left um but that was you know that that, that was that was real that was a real one um that uh, i didn't it wasn't my favorite fan experience most are wonderful most people are just amazing i remember one time after jurassic park when that first came out like i was extremely famous right like everyone knew who i was and so i just remember walking down the street with my dad in la and there's this gaggle of 10 girls who like saw me and like chased me this is an embarrassing story for me but i'm gonna tell it anyway because we're all friends here right um <laughs> where like they like chased me and I was like so nervous. I was a little boy. And so we like went into like, I went into this restaurant and I was like, I have to use the bathroom. So I ran into the bathroom, I'm literally peeing. And my dad opens the bathroom door and is like, Joe, these girls want to say hi to you. He thought I was hiding in there, not actually going to the bathroom. And so he opens the door. <laughs> and Like I remember one girl specifically going like, <laughs> like running away I was like absolutely mortified I wanted to kill my father I don't know why I love him so much <laughs> a lot of things have really been embarrassing um but I don't know those, those were a couple of funny ones I guess thank you <laughs> you guys have learned stuff these are stories I've never told uh in any interview ever so you've definitely learned some things today <laughs> thank you so much you're welcome great to meet you <laughs> How are we doing? Is anyone still awake? I love the term peace stories for it. I just read it in the chat. That's really cool. <laughs> That'll be the only one. I hope so. Uh, I hope there's not more. Who am I talking to? Where are the, I have all the organizers of this left. Have you all abandoned me? We're still here. Oh, uh, okay. Hi. 
Hello. Oh my God. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Hi. It's how are such you? an honor to talk to you. I'm so nervous. This is so exciting. <laughs> I honestly mind. was one of the last ones to join to this um, to this project, so I didn't know I was going to have the chance to talk to you. Well, uh, like you I told around. you, sorry, what? I'm glad you stayed. <laughs> of course, <laughs> but I'm seriously so shy that this is really frightening for me. <laughs> but I'm so happy. We you actually talk have to talk. Instead, me? Will that help? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I need it. And when I'm nervous, I can't stop talking. So I'm sorry. Thank you so much for that. We no actually worries. have talked um, a few times. You congratulate me on my um, on my 2020 and 2021 birthday. So thanks for that. I just wanted to acknowledge that. And it was really special for me because... Um, I, I mean, when I was having bad days, I received some of your messages and it really helped me a lot. So um, now going with the question, um, I was going to ask you about your experience in Undrafted and how it was for you directing it. But as long as you talked about it, I think I'm going to change my question. So I would like to know who has been the hardest uh, character to play to you, the, the most challenging character to play for you, and why? Hmm, um, yeah, you know, I think that um, Sledge is obviously one of them. Um, because again, that series was so long, I got it for a year. Um, um, am I hearing someone? Mutes, mutes. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, obviously that was a very difficult one uh, for the reasons I've said before. And it was, it took a full year. It was such a responsibility. The shooting conditions were so hard. The boot camp, it was all really tough. They really like put us through the ringer on that one. So that was extremely difficult. But I would say uh, another one that was very difficult was uh, Dexter from The Cure. Uh, we talked about the cure a little bit. I don't know if you've seen that movie, but some people have. Yeah, and I actually I, talked to you about it, and you told me oh. you were surprised about my message related to it. Because there you I'm go. Really <laughs> well, I'm glad yeah. you've seen it. I would, I, you know, that one was very challenging. You know, I had to play a, a little boy with a terminal disease, um, and uh, honestly, like I had to lay in a casket um, and play dead as well, and that for a little kid not little kid but like a 12 year old you know that's kind of a weird experience like laying in a casket while like someone's acting to you and you are like not supposed to be there but you have to kind of like come to terms with like some of your mortality um and so and playing a character who knows about his mortality and, and is like uh knows that he's approaching the end of his life was very heavy very very heavy difficult shoot difficult role to play but you know like sledge one of the most rewarding for me um sometimes that's the way it works that the that the hardest ones are the ones that, that matter the most to you i love both of those characters i think they were amazing especially eugene sledge hey i mean i i know you from bohemian rhapsody and it was for me really fascinating to uh, see your acting but then um, I, I started to watching all your movies and series and all of that. And I think the moment in which I became a fan of yours was when I watched uh, The Pacific, because that character you play, Eugenie Slash, honestly touched my heart so deeply that uh, I honestly cried. And at, at some moments I was like thinking about, you know, getting through the screen to hold him. It's just so <laughs> amazing. And I think... You have such incredible acting skills and thank you so much for answering to me. And I don't know if I said it, but I'm from Colombia. So lots of love from Colombia. Wonderful. And we hope to, to see you here someday. We hope you can visit um, South America. You say you never have visited us, but we want you to do it. I will. One day, I promise you, I'll get there. Thank you so much. I appreciate okay, you doing thanks this. Thanks to you, and I'm sorry for my nervousness. <laughs> no, 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 no. You were great. Thank you. <laughs> I love you. I love the background, too. <laughs> I um, It was made by one of the organizers. Oh, great. Awesome. Oh, 
Oh, Meeting. way to go, Bye. organizers. <laughs> I knew they were the best. Uh, Bridget, I think, is next. Oh, hey, I'm on audio. Hello, okay. audio, Bridget. Okay, of all the people you've worked with, how do you feel about your brother working with Jim Carrey and not you? <laughs> <laughs> I was such a huge fan of Jim Carrey growing up. I once made a like tape of myself doing an impression of him in the mask because I just loved him so much. And we were taught we talked about sending it to him because we had the same agent actually when I was a kid. We never did it. We should have. I don't know why we never did. Um, and so when he was going to be on set of Simon Birch, that was the only person ever that I was starstruck around. I was like, I just couldn't believe I got to meet Jim Carrey. It was like just the highlight of my life. Um, and yes, my brother got to be in a scene with him, but, I got, but he played me. Right, oh, right. Mute, please. Can you mute me? <laughs> um, but. Um, Venga, wey. Ush. Que me dio un calambre. Justo cuando estaba hablando. Can you, can you guys mute the. Uh, Uy, no, wait, no I me can me find her. her. <laughs> That's probably one of the last people we spoke. That's okay. I forget too. Um, yes, Jim Carrey. At, and he was so sweet to me. He was the nicest guy in the world. He was so nice to all the fans that were there to see him. I. It's cool that, like, he got to play me, you know what I mean? Like he was cast in the movie to play me, which is pretty amazing. Um, and my brother was like, my brother like couldn't care less. He was like, oh, I have to miss a soccer tryout. It's like, John, who cares? You get to be in a movie with Jim Carrey. You're gonna be paid money for this. Acting wasn't his thing. <laughs> Thank but, you. Uh, yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome to answer awesome. your question. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm not sure I understand. Me neither, watch. Hello. Hi. Hi. Can me? I can hear you and I can see you. Oh my God. I was not expecting this to happen. So um cool. <laughs> oh, what was my question? Oh yeah. Um what's your name? Michelle. Hi, hey, Michelle. Hi. Um, and I'm here from Boston. Oh, from Ohio originally, but um anyway, my question before I forget it. Um You've done some traveling, so I was just wondering what was the coolest thing you've ever seen while traveling on movie sites or for your own fun? Oh man, um, well, you know, I probably, it was probably Jurassic Park, traveling to Kauai and like going to locations where you have to be helicoptered in, that's the only way to get there. Um, that kind of thing was just amazing to me and going to, we went to a place where it's like, it rains every single day. There's not a day that it doesn't rain. Um, like that was just such a cool experience being in this like, and I'll never be able to go there again. You know, you can't even like get there unless you have like these kinds of special passes. Um, and I would say maybe I got to meet like, uh, Prince Charles when I did Shadowlands because of course, uh, Lord Richard Attenborough was the director of that. And so when we had the premiere, the, some of the Royals were there. Um, so I got to go and, uh, I can't remember where we went to. I don't know. I can't remember where the premiere was, but he showed up and I got to stand in line with everybody and it was very proper. And, you know, as a little American boy, I was like, <laughs> very out of place um but it was fun to kind of be in that line procession with with royalty that was a sort of interesting unique cool experience in my travels um and yeah you know i mean i i've i've been it's been really that's one of my favorite things about acting you know like i got to do something in australia i got to go up to canada i got to go to london i got to go to hawaii i you know i get to kind of uh go to places that I never thought I'd be able to go to because because of the job I have. And so it's uh, one of the perks. I hope I get to, I, I hope I, some, I'll be honest with you. If the script is just average, but it's shot in a really cool location, my, uh, you know, maybe it, uh, the script looks a little better to me after that, uh, let's say. <laughs> That'd be a park, cool park, traveling. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Um, yeah, a favorite national park. Someone's asked me. Uh, ooh, I don't know. I love national parks so much. I love um, uh, Glacier National Park probably, and Montana is my favorite. Sorry, that's not your question, but I just saw it come up. <laughs> that's all right. That's okay. 
Thank you so much for participating in this. It means a lot to Thank me. Thanks for, for looking around. Um, thank you. We must be getting near the end, mustn't we? Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, I'm Maggie. Hi, Maggie. I'm from Ocean City, New Jersey. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> it's nice. Uh, Come on. <laughs> um, my question is about the social network because it's like one of my favorite movies you were in. Yeah. Uh, my question is, what was the best part of being on that movie? And could you like take anything away from that experience, like acting or directing wise? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> particularly directing. David Fincher is very, very particular. He's very... I would say he's a tougher director. Um, he expects a lot. He expects a lot out of his crew. Um, he expects a lot of everyone. He does a lot of takes. He'll just run from one take to the next. Um, but he's also one of my favorite directors I've ever worked with because yes, he is hard on his crew, but he's fair because he can do everybody's job on that set. He has his eye on everything. He knew if there was a bottle like this, if it's supposed to be faced this way or this way because he just remembers it. He knows the arc of everybody's character. He knows, like he has his eye on every single piece of the process. So he's holding you accountable. It's like, you need to be as good as he is. Um, and that's something I felt like I really learned, like you to be a great director and to make a really great movie, you must, nothing can be, you can't miss anything. You can't take a moment off. You can't take a day off or just like kind of like, be yakking or having fun. You have to be focused about every single thing that's going on because once you get to the editing room, it's over, right? Like once you get off the set, you can't go back. Usually sometimes if you have a lot of money, you can. But um, so like just his attention to detail um, and he's really funny too. So it's not like it was like a set that you felt uncomfortable on. I felt very comfortable on that set. Um, and it was such a great cast, like, um, you know, uh, Andrew and Jesse and Justin, they're all just like such great guys. And I had a lot of fun with all of them. I love um, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Andrew's a great guy, sweetest guy in the world. We had a ton of fun on that set. Um, miss those guys. Those are guys I don't see that much. It's a shame. Oh, that's um, but, uh, we, we keep in touch every once in a while. Yeah, that uh, movie seemed fun to film. Like, we had it just seemed to be on. We had so much fun. The script was so much, so great. You know, it was so, we were so back and forth, pithy and, and getting to have fun. And um, it was really a, a joyful experience with a director who is an all-time great. You know, I've been so lucky. I've gotten to work with a lot of like all-time great directors and I continue to be able to do so. And Fincher's way up there. I'd love to work with him again um, because he's, he's hilarious. And he is just like, he's one of a kind, that guy. He's awesome. <laughs> well, thank um, you. Thank you. Have fun in New Jersey. Thank you for sticking around. At least it's like normal time of day for you. Yeah. Yeah. I was very lucky. <laughs> All right. Take care. Great to meet you. Yeah, you too. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I think that was the last. Did we do it? Did we do it, guys? Yes, who is that? Thanks, Tony. Uh, this is Kristen. Uh, I'm uh, right here from uh, Phoenix. Okay, I can't see you, but hello. Oh. Oh, wait, wait, yeah. maybe, maybe soon, maybe soon. Hello, now I see you. Hi, thank you so much for your time and for your involvement in doing this fundraiser. This means a lot to me, too. I'm a teacher, and so anything that we can do for, uh, to help these kids that seems so okay too so thank you that's wonderful yeah my brother and his wife are both teachers and obviously my parents oh. were dance teachers nice yeah your family seems terrific so <laughs> thank you for your time so um my question was um what is a uh, goal or a dream that you have um, well, I want to, I am, I am determined to direct again, um, before a certain birthday that is inching up on me way too fast, uh, terrifyingly. Um, and I won't speak its name, but, uh, it's, I have a little time, but I gotta get going. So I really, really want to direct again. I'd love to, I'd love to get like a TV show I wrote off the ground. That would be amazing. And just like 
star mm -hmm. in a series or kind of be a showrunner on something like that because I think that I don't want to miss out on this golden age of TV. Um, there's so right. much great stuff out there. Um, and it's still there, you know, it might be a little oversaturated now with some crap, but uh, there's still plenty of great <laughs> yeah. shows. You can, and because there's so many, there's so many places to have them to, to be, to have shows be seen. It would be great to do something like that. So those are my goals, my, my career goals. And just to really just keep making quality projects and just to keep working, you know, it's, it's a gig business. It's weird where you can be hot for a while and have a bunch of things in a row. And like I said, with COVID, a bunch of things got delayed or got canceled and, and so you never know where this weird business is going to take you. So every day I'm on a set is a privilege. And so my goal is just keep working and keep making things that you guys enjoy. Absolutely. And I've enjoyed them since I was a kid too. I've seen movies like Simon Burge and Jurassic Park and even Star Kid. And oh, Star Kid. Yeah. First Star Kid mention. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. I saw that in theaters when uh, I was like nine. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That was a fun one to shoot. I forget about that movie sometimes. That was so much fun to shoot. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, underrated classics that, that I remember that you've done. So I, I've appreciated all of those. And well, thank um, you very much. of course, and uh, if you get a chance, uh, it would be wonderful if uh, you could come by um, Phoenix Fan Fusion uh, at one point. Maybe even get some of the Bow Rap guys too. Oh, yeah. I don't know what that is. Phoenix Fan Fusion. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, we can't call it Phoenix Comic Con because of copyright. But I see. Got it. <laughs> but Sounds yeah, good. Jeff Goldblum was there uh, la uh, the last time that we had it. Oh, that's great. Jeff, what a great guy. So much fun. Yeah, guy. he's terrific. Yeah. He was so, great with me. Yeah, uh, he's really nice. So it was a privilege to meet him too. But again, thank you so much for your kindness and uh, doing this for uh, the hospital and for all of us too. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you, you for, part for participating. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Take care. Thank you. Okay. We have taken up. Oh, oh, we have someone else. Hello. How are you? Hi. Hi. I'm Jessica and I just want to ask you a question about a movie that I don't hear much about, but it's one of my favorites that you've been in. Um, it's one where you played a ghost. It was The Sensation of Sight, and I really loved that film. It was very heart-wrenching and heavy to watch, and I don't hear much about that movie. So what was what was it like working with um, Ian Somerhalder? Because, I mean, come on, like, I love him too, so I just want to know what, what was it like? I don't hear much about it, so... Uh, yeah, you know, it was a movie that I didn't, it, it didn't really get much of a release, um, because it was very long, a bit heavy, um, but it was a great movie. I loved that script. David Strathairn, who I worked with many times, uh, over the course of my life, he played my dad in a number of films. Um, he was producing it and he asked me to be in it. And I said, of course I'll be in it. Um, and so, yeah, I got to work with Ian. That was the first time I met Ian. We were brothers, um, heavy role for him. Um, and he was great. He was such a good guy. Um, absolute sweetheart, genuine. And Daniel Gillies, I became really good friends with Daniel Gillies. I don't see him enough, Ugh, but I love Daniel so much. We were, we were like really close for a while. Um, and um, he was just a great guy. Um, so I had a really nice time on that movie. We shot it in New Hampshire and it was a crazy role, right? I'm playing a ghost. Um, but I did have one scene before I became a ghost where I had to put a gun in my mouth, which was terrifying. Um, and especially when you hear about all these, you know, recent tragedies on film sets, um, I think back. Um, oh, something came up. I hope you can still hear me. Can you still hear me? Yes. Yeah, I can hear yeah. you. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, yeah, but, uh, it was a cool experience. It's a small movie. I wish it got a wider release. Um, that story I told earlier, if you were around, where I got in the Rockies in that snowstorm, it was because I was going to Denver for a film festival, the Denver Film Festival, where it was playing. Um, oh. Yeah, but uh, that's a good one, too. That, uh, you know, another one of those little hidden gems that I was happy to be a part of. Also, I just want to show you one thing, which is really simple, but I bought this hoodie because of you. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I have the exact same one. It's, it's yeah, incredible. I would love. I just yeah, I would love to go with you see one day too. So. Right on, do it, do it. Thank you so much. Good luck to you. I hope you're able to do it. Thanks for thanks for participating.
I won't say that's the end because I don't know. Is it the end? Yes. Okay. Woo! We did it, guys. For anyone who actually hung around for all of that, you are a super duper fan. Um, <laughs> um, and to all those people that had to fall asleep, I'm so sorry, but we're recording this so you can see anything you want to see. I'm glad I got to everybody I wanted to. Thanks for sticking with me for three hours and 15 minutes. Uh, genuinely love you all. Without you guys, I have nothing. I am not an actor. I am not employed. I am not fulfilled in life. Um, so you have no idea how important you are. And to be donating to one of the greatest causes in the world means a lot to me and to my family. Love you guys. Um, and, and again, thanks for being a part of it.